Hi, in this video I'm going to show you how to compare shipment versus receive quantities with Power Query and Power Pivot. Say for example we have two tables. We have a table that looks at our shipment data. Maybe we have uh, orders that we put together or we're looking at and we have a quantity ordered and the quantity shipped and we want to compare that with the quantity to receive and that's on another table. And uh, usually you might want to think if we wanted to kind of put it together and uh, have something like this where we'd have a comparison with columns where we have our quantity ordered, quantity shipped, and quantity received, it could be done fairly easily. Well, what we would need to do maybe you think is to create some VLOOKUPs, but if you notice here we have uh, some items here, this uh, item here and the second row here, and it's under uh, one sales order number, but we also have the same item under a different sales order number. And the same thing goes here. We have the uh, I the item here, and there are one done sales order, and we have the item that's received under another sales order. So it kind of equals out here. But in a case where we have an item that is here, where we have Q34, QQ34, we have this item that got ordered, and, but it didn't get shipped. But we have this other item that's on the same same sales order, the same item number that got ordered and shipped, and the same thing down here got ordered and shipped. And we see here it got received, the 261 got received, and 200 got received, but that previous 200 didn't get received, of course, because it didn't get shipped. Now, this shows up here where we have a delta of 200. Uh, the quantity to order is 661, quantity to ship is 461, and of course the quantity shipped is 461. So we have that missing 200, which of course did not ship yet. Now, you may think, okay, what we can do is we can create some VLOOKUPs and kind of join the sales order number and item number together. And there's a lot of things to do where we'd have to do it for both tables. But there's actually a more easier way to do it, and that's using uh, Power Query and Power Pivot. Now, what we need to do is we actually have to have four tables in uh, this particular scenario. We would have to have our table here, which is basically our uh, order and ship table, and we also have to have this table here, which is our receive table. But we, in addition, we also have to have two other tables. We have to have a sales order table with the sales order number, and we would have to have the item name table. And these two tables have to have unique values for each of the particular values. The sales orders here have to be unique, and the item names have to be unique. What I'm going to do is take these unique items from the shipping table because uh, we're assuming it all kind of starts from shipping. So the sales order, we're going to pull in the unique order numbers from the shipping table, and we're also going to pull in the unique item names from the shipping table. So let's go into Excel to see how this is done. So here I am in my Excel worksheet. You can see here I have a shipping table and I also have a receiving table or this range of data. The first thing I'm going to do is turn these both into tables. I'm going to select any cell in here and go ahead and click insert table. And I'm going to go ahead and indicate that my table has headers. Keep that check mark. Click OK. And I'm going to give this table a name. I'm going to call it just ship. Ship table or just ship. So I know what it is when I bring it into uh, Power Pivot. I'm going to do the same thing for receiving here, the receiving range here. And as you notice, I don't need to go to insert table. I can also use a keyboard shortcut using the Control T keyboard shortcut. It will bring up that same window. I'm going to click OK. And I'm going to name this one uh, receive, right? Now, as I mentioned before, I need two extra tables. And that's going to be my uh, unique sales order table and my unique item table. And I'm going to take it from the shipping table because that's kind of where it all, the, the, all this transaction starts is from the shipping table. I'm going to take unique sales order numbers and I'm going to take unique item names. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this table into Power Query. Now Power Query and Power Pivot, uh, depending on what version you have of Excel, they could be add-ons what you'd have to go and download from Microsoft. A later version, I think it started at 2010 where you have to download the add-on the add and then go ahead and enable it. Later versions, I think you only need to download the add-on for Power Query and Power Pivot is automatically there. You just need to enable it. So you can just Google Power Query or Power Pivot and get instructions and information from the Microsoft.com website. So I've already downloaded or have uh, Power Pivot and Power Query enabled. And the first thing I'm going to do is use Power Query to bring this in, uh, do some transformation into the table to get off my unique uh, sales order number and unique names. And then I'm going to pull it into Power, the Power Pivot data model. 
So what I'm going to do here is with the shipping table kind of clicked, I'm going to go ahead and go under Power Query and go ahead and click Excel Data from Table. Now I'm going to do this twice, once for the sales order information and another time for the item name information. So the first thing I'm going to do is with sales order, I'm going to go ahead and click on this, right click and remove other columns. I'm going to remove everything except having the sales order number now. Now after that's done, I'm going to go ahead and click remove duplicates because all I want is to have the unique numbers there. So there's only two unique sales order numbers. I'm going to go ahead and call this uh, unique uh, sales order. And I'm going to go ahead and click on the close and load, click the drop down here. And what I want to do is close and load it and make it only a connection. I only want to create a connection to this table and I also want to add this to the data model. So I'll go ahead and click load and you notice that it seems like nothing happens but what it's doing it's creating a workbook query. It's querying this data and it's going to turn it into a, a table that's going to be used later on in Power Pivot. Now, I want to, now I've got the unique sales order number information. And what I want to do is also want to put in the unique item name. So I'm going to go ahead and click in the table again. Click from table and this time, instead of clicking sales order, I'm going to click the item name, right click, and go click remove other columns. I'm going to call this one unique item name. Oops, unique item name. All right? And so after that, I'm also going to, oh, I forgot to uh, the, remove the duplicates here. Let me go ahead and click here, and I'm going to go ahead and click remove duplicates. It should only give me about eight uh, unique values. I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to close and load and have a connection only, create only a connection and also add this to the data model. Once I click on load, this has created another query. You can see the, the name here and it's added that to the data model. Now the data model is actually Power Pivot. You can use them interchangeably, but I'm going to go ahead and go, ahead and go into Power Pivot here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add this table and the receiving table to the data model. They're not there yet. Uh, what I've done is I've used Power Query, one of the Excel BI tools, to load uh, and transform the shipping table. I transformed it into a unique order table and also a unique item name table and put it into the data model. So those are two tables that are in there right now. What I want to do is put the shipping table in its entirety into the data model and also put the receiving table in its entirety into the data model. So as I mentioned before, if I go back into my uh, slide, we're going to have four tables. One is a shipping table, one is a receiving table, uh, a sales order table, and an item name table. All right, so let me go back into Excel and show you how to add the shipping table and the receiving table into the data model. Let me go ahead and go back into Excel. So what, I'm back in Excel here. Uh, I've got the shipping table here. I'm going to go just, this is already a table, and what it's going to do is, I'm going all I need to do is click on Add to Data Model, and it's going to bring it into the data model. And you can see that we have our ship table. You see this link, it's linking to the table back in Excel. It's got the same data. And you also notice we have our two other tables, the unique uh, item name table and the unique sales order table. So those two are in there. Let me go back into Excel and get the receiving table into the data model. So let me go back into the Excel worksheet to get the receiving table. Right now we're in, uh, in a Power Pivot view. What I'm going to do is go back into Excel and go ahead and click on uh, the workbook here, switch to the workbook here. And what I want to do is click on the receiving tab here, get my table, add this to the data model. And once I do that, it's going to add another tab here with the receiving table information. You can see that link here. Basically it's a link to the table back in my worksheet. Now, what I need to do now is create some relationships. So I'm going to go ahead and create some relationships between these tables. So what I want to do is go into diagram view here, and you'll notice that I have my four tables here. So before I create these relationships, I kind of want to go over uh, how we want the information to flow. So I'm back in the PowerPoint, and basically when we want the information to flow down uh, to get that, that table that we have uh, previously, this, tape, this particular table here, what we want to do is we want to be able to just use the information in the sales order, the, the, the sales order numbers or the item numbers and have that filtered down into the shipping and receiving table. So we would get output like this where we'd have a column, two columns, these two columns from the shipping table and that quantity receive column from the receiving table. So with that in mind, we'd always want to uh, use our values from these the common tables 
or these join tables. So basically what it's going to do is uh, the values that are going to come out of that table get filtered down into the other tables to kind of output our data. So let's go back into Excel here. I'm going to move my, my ship table over here. I'm going to use move my receive table over here. So I have my unique sales order. I have my uh, unique items names. So the tables, when we're, when we're joining these transaction tables, these are tables that we have transactions on, to these other tables, maybe I'll just call, call these my common tables or my join tables, these have to have unique values in them. So, so what I'm going to do now is basically create a relationship. And I'm, I'm just going to pull sales order over here. Uh, that's going to work. I'm going to pull sales order over here. That's also going to work. Now I'm going to also pull the item name here to the item name that's a unique value there and the item name over here to the unique value there. So now it's created those relationships. And so when I use one of these in my, my row area, that particular value is going to filter down so I can get my other information, the quantity received from this table and the quantity ordered and quantity shipped from this table. So here, I'm, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to create a pivot table out of this. So there's this pivot table command here. I'll go ahead and click on that. It's going to ask me where I want to put it. I'll put it into a new worksheet. Click OK. And let me go ahead and just close this workbook query uh, pane. And we just have our pivot table fields. So I want to pull in from my unique item, the unique name, and pull it down to, down to the rows. And now I want to put from the ship my quantity ordered, into the values field, put the quantity shipped into the values field. You'll notice that it automatically summed it because these are numbers now. Let me go ahead and just uh, close or uh, it cl collapse that and expand this one. And I want my quantity received from my ship table. Pull it down here. And now we have our information. Now, let me go ahead and, and change the fields here. Usually, uh, it doesn't have it in a tabular format. I'm going to change it from compact form, which is the default, and change this pivot table to tabular form. So we can see our names here. We have our item name here. So let's kind of do some verification and checking. So we had um, QQC 18. We had quantity order 463, quantity, order sh quantity shipped 463, and quantity received 463. So if we go to the shipping, we have uh, this value here for QQ18. Let me go ahead and press the control key. This value here, and we also have this value here. And it gives us the sum of 463. It, we also have it where it's shipped. This, these are the same values where it's shipped. Now let's go to receiving, and we have uh, the quantity received here. Let me go ahead and select that control, click. And then that's QQ18, and then QQ18 is also here in this last one. If we add that up together, it's 463. And that basically gives us the ability now to have put it all into uh, one view, or one table. We, we basically took two tables that had disparate data, and we created some join tables or some common tables that we had some unique data. And now we're able to put the values into one view where we can take a look and see what was shipped, what was ordered, shipped, and what was received. So you may have noticed that uh, we had we also had a unique sales order table, and it's nowhere here. What I can do is I can actually create a slicer. It's another cool feature in Excel. Let me go ahead and close this pane here. And basically, it just gives you another way to filter data, to filter uh, the values here. So I'll go under Design. Whoops, I'll go under uh, Analyze and go and click Insert Slicer. And what I want to do is uh, that table's not here because I've selected only the values from the tables to put in the pivot table. Let me go ahead and click on All. And we see that we have our unique sales order here. I'm going to click on unique sales order, click OK. And now we have a slicer. And basically what a slicer does is it gives you the ability to filter out uh, data within your pivot table. It's just like using a drop down here, but it's a little bit more intuitive where you just have a button to click. So as I mentioned, there's only uh, two sales orders. If I wanted to look at the sales order here, it would indicate uh, only those particular uh, items that fall under that sales order. If I click on this sales order, it, it has only the items that fall under that sales order. If I click on the clear filter, it will give me the items for both. So that's kind of a cool feature there is a slicer uh, for a pivot table. Now, this particular example can also apply if you have like a budget versus actual, th that type of scenario where you're, you're looking to compare values of that. Of course, you'd also have to, to create a common table or a join table. It could be the date. It, it could be the item number uh, that, you're foreca that you're budgeting and forecasting to. So there's a lot of ways you can do that. But the concepts still apply where you'd have to create a, 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 a 
some common tables that have unique values and join them in together with a power pivot, linking them up together. So I hope that helps. Thanks for watching.